New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Over the weekend, um, we lost a legend. R.I.P. Mr. Bob Slade. James Brown ventured into message music with Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. You know, some white disc jockeys around the country had trouble mouthing the song's title. They instead wouldn't identify it or just say, that was James Brown with Black and Proud. Racism in the music industry was alive and well in 1968. Radio stations refused to play certain black records. And the national music charts continued to play a numbers game when it came to black music. As the split between white and black rock and roll grew wider, some acts sought to bridge that gap. The Rascals was one of the few white acts to pay homage to R&B. They would play free concerts in Harlem and when touring demanded and got black acts to tour with them. A four-member band from New York City, the Rascals had an R&B feel to their music and in the 1960s crossed over many times with a string of hits that included Lonely Too Long in 1966, Groovin' in 1967, and People Gotta Be Free in the summer fall of 1968. Soul Beginnings, Bob Slade, um, Open Line, WBLS, WRKS. I mean, I could just, I could probably sit here for the next half an hour and talk about all of the things that Bob Slade contributed to uh, here in New York City um, as a black man, as a newsman, as a community activist, as a friend, as a, I mean, he was beloved, um, but I didn't want to delve into this without bringing in someone who is much closer to it than I, uh, Miss Ann Tripp. How are you? Okay, bro. Thank you very much for asking me to come in and talk about him. Yeah, I, you know, I've known Bob Slade for the last 16 years of my life. Right. And um, he's somebody who everyone in this room and anybody who listened to radio in New York City uh, loved and appreciated his work. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, because, um, as you know firsthand, he did it because... He was a true um, information gatherer. He, he yearned mm -hmm. to make sure the truth was told, mm -hmm. um, whether he was getting paid for it or not. Mm -hmm. um, Especially about those of us who are darker than blue. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> black people for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would just love to hear from you um, as somebody who's worked alongside Bob Slade for your whole career, right? Uh, no, no. Most um, he hired me away from K-Rock. I was working with Howard Stern and them on K-Rock. Right. And I came from K-Rock to here. And before that, I was at uh, a 92K to you with Paco. Yeah, you that's know? right. And uh, before that, I was at uh, I was at WHN. You know, I did uh, I did a lot of different things. But, yes, he hired me here, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it was good because I was ready to get out of K-Rock. So it was great. And his real name, by the way, everybody, was Rob Robert McCants. Mm -hmm. And his brother, he and his brother were both actors. His brother is still an actor. His sister-in-law, Nima Barnett, went to college with me. She's a, a fine director. She directs a lot of Lifetime movies. So he was in the entertainment field. You know, he went to Queens College. After that, he, he ended up in news and stuff like that. But he was an actor. He was in music. You know, he was all involved. And the, he won a Peabody Award for the rise and fall of VJ Records, which uh, that's something I really didn't know about. He had to educate me, and that was, that's what he did. He educated all of us, mm -hmm. even those, who, those of us who think that we know a lot. VJ Records was, just for the audience's uh, benefit, was a black American-owned record label who actually put out some of the Beatles' early hits. Wow. Nobody knows that a black label had about th two or three of the Beatles' hits on it. Not not a white-owned record label, but VJ Records. And it's a rise and fall because VJ became so big because they had the Beatles, and then he started signing people like Arthur Godfrey. And <laughs> Okay, they tanked. Anyway, but, um, <laughs> you know, but that's what happened there. But I'm, what I'm saying is he did a lot. He yeah. did with the Soul Beginnings. You know, you learned a lot when he did his pieces. His long-form pieces were amazing. And the man, like you say, was always thinking and always gathering information and always seeking a way to put it together to, pre to present to the public. You know, today, um, as we sit here and try, we'll talk about our feelings um, about Bob Slade and how he personally affected us. Um, but, you know, he had been struggling with some kidney disease. Yes. Um, and, I, and I wanted to talk about that really quickly because when I went, I went yesterday and I appeared at something at Bed-Stuy Restoration. And I told people, you know, you have to be careful what you put in your body. Bob Slade was a healthy individual in that he did not smoke or drink or any of that stuff. What took him out was milk. Wow. Mm. He liked milk cow's milk. I was with him and Isaac Hayes. We were going to a meeting and his nose started bleeding. 
And I said, what's wrong with your nose? We, we said, go downstairs and come to the meeting late. He came upstairs to the restaurant. As soon as he opened his mouth, he started bleeding again. Mm. He went to the doctor. The doctor said, well, do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you do? Ask him all these questions. No, 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 no. And then finally he said, do you like milk? And he says, oh, I love milk. We would go and play soccer, and he'd have a, a quart of milk. He'd have to have it. Nice. He loved ice cold milk. Mm. Mm. Milk is really liquid fat. And this country has a business to make people rich who make, who have cows, so they say it's healthy. But it is not healthy. That's right. And he drank a lot of milk, and that's what took his kidneys out. Wow. Mm. I didn't know. Milk. So I cannot state it enough to people, stop drinking milk, especially if you're an adult. You don't need milk. And how, Cow's milk. And how old was he? He was 70 years old. 70. He was born in 1948. Yeah. Um, the work. And he hired me, and he hired James M. Tume. Yep. He hired Dean Memager over at, in New York One. He yep. called me. He gave a lot of people they their starts. He really did put a lot of folks on the radio who hadn't been on before. The desire that Bob had to to not to tell the truth with regard to not only uh, local politics, national politics, um, and even the truth about the music business, as everyone just heard in that audio, um, working with him. Um, and the drive to do so. Can you impart any information on us of, of just where that fabric in him and where it comes from? Yes, and I can say that he, unlike a lot of other people, you know, he had his own mind. He was brilliant, but he wasn't afraid of other people's brilliance. You know, some people, they want to be the one that's the smart one. They want everybody else to be a little dumber. He wasn't like that. In fact, he tried to pull stuff out of you. Mm. When I first came over here, I was like straight news, very quiet. And he said, well, we do opinion shows, and we want to hear your opinion. I said, you don't really want to hear my opinion, do you? He said, no, no, we want. I said, but Bob, you really don't want to hear me. Okay, <laughs> I, don't really, I really think. And he pulled it out of me. And he made me pretty much a star because I had all these fans that said, oh, I love Aaron Triple. It was because Bob made me come out of myself and say what I really thought, not to be afraid of saying what I, what I really thought. Just say it. Tell, tell people what you think. And he did that. He wasn't afraid of seeing um, intelligence in other people like Dean Memager, who's now at New York One. He's an anchor and all that. He used to come. He, he worked right here as That's an right. intern and everything like that. So he wasn't afraid to help other people, and he wasn't afraid to mine the minds of people. And he wanted, yes, that truth to be out there, but he wanted everybody to contribute and tell that truth. He was a unique individual in that way, especially unique for this business. What, what do you think he enjoyed the most in his life because all of us always talk to him about so many different things mm -hmm. what sometimes it would be music sometimes sports really seem to be what get him, go, really got him going yeah. what do you think really he loved the most yeah you know that's so funny because he was so multifaceted it's hard to pin him down because you get him on the right day and all he wants to talk about yep. is sports get him on the other yeah. day he wants to talk about movies and blacks and tv you know <laughs> it depends on what day you hit him right you know he won't talk about something else and he was all in he was all in, and I remember that about him and love that about him. Anybody like that who's all in but not selfish with it, who wants you to be good and you to be your best, mm -hmm. how many people are like that in this business? Not many. Not and many. I, I will say, when I, I just remember him being so welcoming, just so welcoming, and I remember having multiple conversations with him, but one thing that he would always, whether we had a local politician in, he was always just pushing us. He's like... We need these conversations, Missy. We need these conversations. And we just, you could talk to him. Literally, I've spoken to him about art. I, you right. know, uh, I was like, I'm not the sports one. We're not going to talk about sports. But <laughs> he was just so encouraging. And, you know, just watching him, he was, a, he was a living legend. Yes. He wanted to see people do better. Yeah. And say better. And speak up. Yeah. And learn. Yeah. And, you know, he wanted that from people. And like I said, that's very interesting for this business because there are people who will keep you down if they think you are a little smarter than they are or maybe you have information they don't have. They don't want to hear it from you. But he's not. he wasn't that kind of person. And that's, that made him very unique in this business. And believe me, I've been in this business a while. He was very unique. How is, um, how is the BLS family in general kind of holding up today? Because this is uh, a lot. Yeah, everybody's very quiet, and I think that's the best way. No one's really crying because we know his spirit lives. That's right. And we know that he, he, he died on his own terms. I mean, he had done so much. It's not like he was cut off very, very early. And uh, he left a lot for us. So we're quiet, we're respectful, we remember him fondly, and we go on, and that's what he would want. You know, it was many a day in the last, uh, you know, year and change where he would, you know, just making it through the lobby – up the elevator, we would sit out here and talk because he would be out of breath. Yeah, I was here. afraid for him when that happened. Yeah, uh, when because I thought he wasn't taking a cab in. He used to just take a uh, take the train. Yep. Yeah, and I said, Bob, take a cab, and he said, I did. 
So right. even after getting out of the cab, he had to sit down there for a minute before he could walk. And that's when I was very afraid, very fearful. What happened was he was up for another kidney transplant. Got it. He had one. It worked fine. He was up for another one. They called him. Apparently, according to Fatima Muhammad, he didn't get back to them for like a day and a half. He didn't check that phone or something like that, and he didn't get back to them. So the kidney went to someone else because they can't hold that. Right. So then they had to put him back on the list, and he was waiting at the time that he died. Well, we say RIP this morning to Bob Slade. I mean, Bob Slade is a legend that I don't really, I don't really understand. I don't really think that people listening necessarily can wrap their brains around the the amount of work yeah. that was done. No, no, I, I don't. I don't think you can process it because it wasn't glorious. It wasn't like everyone. It wasn't done for glory. It was done truly for community. And like a lot of people talk about doing things for the community. And like you said, we'll talk to Lisa Evers later. She's someone who also, like, her life is community. Yeah. You know, I, I know for myself that hasn't been true of me. It's been mostly about me and talking about music and having fun. Bob Slade did it for the community, the people. He's one of those institutions that makes a place better and holds people accountable and was also somehow always upbeat in spite of the fact that, like, even most recently... Things have not been upbeat in the world politically and socially, and yet he was always upbeat in spite of how deeply he was entrenched in that. Well, and, and it's it's interesting you say that because I would often say, have we ever seen anything like this before? Like oh, yeah, something yeah, would I happen in the news, that. and I'd yeah. be like, yo, Mr. Slade, we haven't seen anything like this before? He would be like, not quite like this. This is a new <laughs> low, or this is a new crazy. But, and then he would impart some knowledge of like, a moment in time or a different politician or talk yeah. about Nixon or talk, you know, and talk about these other things that were going on. Right. Um, and even when I'd get on here and go into some crazy political pontifications, right, and feel completely alone, I'd see him in the hallway and be like, am I completely crazy and off base or am I still in? He was like, keep going. Keep talking crazy. They need that. They're thinking that. That's what we all think. Say it. Say it. Um, and, you know, I'm going to really miss that. Yeah, and we, we lost, we lost, um... You know, every time you lose someone like Bob Slade, you lose someone who's truly educated and connected to what's happened before us. You know, like as we live in a time when the tone is set by people on the internet who don't know anything, who didn't do work. This is a guy who did the work, the education, the not like he had the knowledge. And took time to embrace anyone who approached him. So it's it really sucks that we uh that we lost that. And yes, he was 70, and that's a pretty good run, but in this era, man, like Bob should have been around a lot longer. You know, yeah. he could have been doing what he was doing for another 10, 15 years. Um, and that sucks. He's He always took time, man. He always stopped to talk. He always wanted to say hello to everyone here. He will. He is, more than anyone I can recall, he will be truly missed around here. You know, we were just talking about um, how, how most people outside of our world in media probably don't even grasp the magnitude and importance of a Bob Slade. Um, and I, I feel like our contribution as young people who were um, inspired by, embraced, um, took time uh, with Bob and he gave us his time because he definitely didn't have to do that to teach us and point us in the right direction. I think something we can do um, is contribute to making um, his legacy better known and somehow uh, archiving and creating digital versions of those phenomenal story stories he would create uh, through Soul Beginnings and even the conversations in Open Line, if we can archive those in some way, shape, or form. And by the way, I, you know, if you're out there listening and you maybe you grew up in your household on Sundays, open line was always on or whatever, uh, give us a shout, 800 9797 Because I know for a lot of people, it was just something that was they listened to on their way to church. It was just kind of background in their home, you know. But, like, also, like, it was such a, um, there's such a black community part of it. Like that I've mentioned his name before to white people in the media business who aren't familiar because he's it's such a community sort of thing that he was doing. Like it was really actually about the people 
Well, you know, most people don't. It, it's this way in Latin communities too, right? And and other communities that have local community radio stations, right? Um, black radio, remember, was the only place you were going to hear not only voices that were familiar to you, right? Uh, but the issues that were going on in your community. Yeah. It wasn't going to be on the news. Yeah. It just wasn't there. So Bob Slade is that voice prior to you having black newscasters on television, let alone community service programs on television or even on mainstream radio that were going to cover what was actually going on in black communities by black voices and black people who lived in those communities that you could relate to. And so that's kind of that power that I don't think most people appreciate today because you have so much mainstream media where black folks have a voice, but that's because of people like Bob Slade who fought that fought fought that fight because make no mistake the work that Bob Slade did with his team around open line it wasn't because the ratings were astronomical you know how many wars we got into in this building where they tried to cancel that program because the ratings were bad on Sunday all right because it's a Sunday morning community affairs show you know how many radio stations in this city don't even take time out to do that Hot 97 and BLS are two of the radio stations on a mainstream level that still do that because you don't have to anymore right I don't know what the rules are. I, I think you no longer have to do The FCC full... doesn't require it. Mm -mm. That no. still take the time out to have a discussion about what is going on in the local community. And, like, don't get me wrong. It's really good that we live in a world where on social media people discuss issues that are important. And, like, if something happens, Twitter reacts. But 99.9% .9 of the people, even with blue checks yelling about an issue don't know anything they're just reading it from other people's twitter no bob or knew though yes, yes. bob slade knew so you have to understand like he came from an era where to get to the point where you could be in front of the microphone you had to earn it by working and knowing things so that voice is so missing because in this mass of media we have and social media you're just seeing it's all chirping and barking from people who really don't know he knew we lost someone who knew, who you could trust, you know? And one thing that I think about just as like a personal lesson and aside is like, I, I know the last time I saw him, I was definitely dealing with my own personal stuff and gave him like a hello, but sort of, and he's he was always up to chat because I didn't, I didn't see him as much recently. And I definitely know I sort of um, wasn't up for it. Like I, I was dealing with something myself. And so... I didn't have that conversation. And I, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm sure everyone knows that experience of like, my point being like, when there's that person, don't avoid that conversation. Because like Bob was someone who I had to know in my heart at some point was probably gonna be gone too soon if I was really thinking and not being selfish. And I, I wish I'd gotten to have one more with him because he was just such a fun loving guy to talk to. Yeah, no, we would go in. We would go in, man. He probably, I have to imagine, I have to imagine he liked what we were doing on the show, though. Oh, he, oh no, he would compliment us all sure the time. He made sure to let us know, at least in the conversations that I had with him. He was very proud of, of, of us being vocal about community issues and politics. Shay. Good morning. You listen to Open Line every Sunday. Yes, I did, with my mom and my grandparents. Every Sunday morning, right before church, it would be on around, like, 9 o'clock in the morning, and my mom would just, Agree, agree, agree to what Bob was saying. So I just wanted to say a few words and how powerful his words were and, you know, rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. Appreciate Thanks, Shay. sharing that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ali. Yo, peace, peace. Peace, Ali. What's good, man? What do you want to say? Uh, man, that show open line was, uh, that was my go-to source for uh, community affairs information, social information. I remember listening to the show and them talking about um we're about to have a, a big storm in louisiana uh send your prayers and then after it happening they had to actually cover everything happened that happened in katrina 
I learned about Jenna Six from them. I learned about the the, uh, um, the kids that got locked up for the uh, Central Park Jogger case. Mm-hmm. Great informational show. It's a huge loss to the to the radio family, to the New York family. My condolences to everybody in radio, his friends and family. Shouts out to uh, DJ John, man, uh, to learn about that information, how he helped him. It's a huge loss, man. Salutes to you guys. I love your show. Thanks. Peace out. Thanks, Ali. Appreciate it, man. The open line team is going to be there, though. They they going to rock. Solid. They're going to be solid. And they're going to continue to do that work. And um, Dean Memager and Lisa Evers and Ann Tripp and Fatim and M. Tume and The Judge. <laughs> um, Mr. Pickett and... You know, everybody, Shayla, um, Jeff Fox, I mean, Bugsy, I could keep going and going and going. Yeah, man. M. Hotep, Mr. Bird, um, just thanks to everybody um, for coming together. I, you know, the whole team was on BLS yesterday. You know, the whole family, everybody came together. So, uh, Bob Slade, as you can see, if you don't know who he is, he's very important. So do your research, pay attention. We're going to do our best to keep his uh, his legacy alive, man, and hopefully be able to digitize some of his great work, you know, because that's the world we live in now. A lot of people, it doesn't exist to them if it's not on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to have a conversation with the, the higher-ups and uh, about making sure that gets done where there's a place people can, can find it. Because when you Google his name, there should be more there. You know what I'm saying? Like every friggin' idiot who's ever tweeted something, you Google their name, you can find pages and pages. Right. Yeah. And a legend like Bob Slade, you find a couple articles, a couple YouTube videos mm-hmm. because his medium wasn't that. So we have to we have to fix that and pay homage to these people while they're giving it giving us gems. Yo, good morning. We say RIP to Bob Slade. Uh an amazing life lived, a legend. You will be celebrated and we thank you so much.